as far as reading the Quran for a deceased person is concerned, there is no verse of the glorious Quran nor any authentic hadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him which mentions that we can do it. The Prophet did not do it nor did the Sahaba do such a practice that when a person died they read Quran upon him. And there is an important ruling in Islam that as far as ibadat are concerned, as far as acts of worship are concerned, as far as acts of worship are concerned, things that are related to the deen, ibadat, we require proof to do anything as far as ibadat are concerned. For example, the fajr prayer, the fard prayer that we offer during the fajr time, we offer two rakah of fard fajr prayer. Someone cannot say that three rakah is better than two rakah, so I will offer three rakah of fard fajr prayer. We do not have evidence for offering three rakah of fard fajr prayer. We have evidence for offering two rakah of the fard fajr prayer. As far as muamalat are concerned, the daily things which are not part of the deen, everything is permitted until proven otherwise, until it, there is a evidence which says that this is prohibited. For example, all food are permitted for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kulu min tayyibat, that eat of the good things that we have provided for you. So all food are prohibited for us unless there is an evidence which says that a particular food is prohibited. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah chapter number 2 verse number 173, in Surah Al-Maida chapter number 5 verse number 3, in Surah Al-Anam chapter number 6 verse number 145, and in Surah Al-Nahl chapter number 16 verse number 115, حُرِّمَتْ عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَيْتَةُ وَالدَّمُ وَلَحْمُ الْخِنْزِيرِ وَمَا أُحِلَّ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ بِهِ Forbidden for your food are dead meat, blood, flesh of swine, and any food, and any food on which any other name besides Allah's name has been taken. These types of food are these types of food are prohibited for us Muslims. So we have evidence that pocket is prohibited from the glorious Quran. As far as reciting the glorious Quran on a dead person is concerned and we find this that this is very common in the Indian subcontinent. In the Indian subcontinent it is called as Quran Khani wherein they call a few people or a bunch of people and they give them one juice, two juice, three juice, three juice of the glorious Quran and they read the glorious Quran on the deceased person or on the person who has passed away thinking that it will benefit him there is no evidence for this from the glorious Quran there is no evidence for this from the glorious Quran nor from the actions of the Prophet nor from the actions of the Sahaba and if it was a good action the Sahabas would have done it and imagine a person he commits sins throughout his life and when he passes away people, they recite Quran on him. What is the point? A person can do sins throughout his life and later when he dies, people recite Quran on him and his sins are forgiven and he's benefited. What is the point in this situation? This person, he has not even done the good deed himself that is reciting the glorious Quran. Someone else is reciting the glorious Quran on him. If it was so, everyone would do sins and after they would pass away, they would just tell their relatives that recite the Quran on me and it will benefit me or my sins will be forgiven. So this action, it should be avoided because there is no evidence for it from the glorious Quran or from the authentic teachings of our beloved Prophet Muhammad. May peace and blessings be upon him. As far as what can we do, what will help the person who has passed away, the, the deceased person, our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, that when the son of Adam passes away, all of his deeds are cut off except for three. إِذَا مَاتَ بْنُ آدَمْ إِنْ قَطَعْ عَمَلُوا إِلَّا عَنْ ثَلَاثِ صَدَقَةٌ جَارِيَةٌ An ongoing charity. وَلَدٌ صَالِحْ يَدْعُوا لَهُ A pious child praying for him. And the third is عِلْمٌ يَنْتَفِعُ بِهِ Beneficial knowledge which he has left behind. So if a person really wants to benefit himself even after he has passed away or if you want to benefit someone after he has passed away so these are the three things that we can do a person he should try to give sadaqah that is charity and ongoing charity that will continue even after he passes away and he should give correct tarbiyah 
correct upbringing to his children so that after he passes away his children do dua for him and the pious child if he does dua for the father inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will accept the dua it will benefit the father and the third is beneficial knowledge that a person has left behind and we have several example the best example we have of the best human being who ever walked on the face of the earth our beloved prophet Muhammad peace be upon him he left behind a legacy what did he leave behind did he leave behind wealth did he leave behind he did not even leave behind a son after he passed away his sons died his son died in his life he left behind knowledge he left behind a legacy he left behind sahaba who were torchbearers of the world the same is the case with the sahaba they left behind beneficial knowledge which people are benefiting from it even today even the scholars who we have the four aimma what did they leave behind they left behind beneficial knowledge which people are benefiting from even today so we should see to that we leave behind a legacy a legacy that will benefit people and generations to come even after we pass away so these are the three things that will benefit a person even after he passes away among the righteous deeds among the good deeds